my talk is going to be about assess sleep, sleep quality assessment by a data-driven approach based on a wearable neurotechnology. Um, I'm Jens Klinsing, I'm R &D, R D neuroscientist uh, specialized on sleep and cognition, and I'm the lead of the sleep innovation program at Bitbrain. So Bitbrain is a neurotech company based in Spain. We are specialized uh, on high-tech physiological monitoring with a strong focus on neuroscience. Um, we offer integrated hard and software solutions. Um, that means we provide the devices, but also the data analysis, the decoding of brain states and so on. Um, and the, the applications of our products span human behavioral research, both in the private and the public sector, but also marketing and the health sector. And the health sector is what this project is about, uh, in which we aim to improve the standard of monitoring and assessment of sleep. So the problem is the following. Sleep is essential for health and well-being. However, sleep problems and sleep disorders are highly prevalent in our society. And this results in a lot of downstream effects, um, a lot of health problems in the population, human suffering and huge economic costs as well. Um, and this is especially the case because sleep disorders nowadays are often not diagnosed and therefore not treated. And tackling um, this, this, this problem would require accurate sleep diagnostics that are actually available to people. Um, yeah, and as a result, the, because, because that is not the case right now, patients are just not getting the treatment that they require. But what makes nowadays sleep diagnostics so complicated and so expensive? So. Down here, down in the bottom left corner, we um, see um, a current device that is generally used, the so-called poly polysomnographic device. And as you can see, it's a quite complex apparatus. And the advantages of medical equipments like this are clear. Um, they, um, they have a multitude of sensors, they have high accuracy, um, but because these systems are so complex, they also have a lot of disadvantages. Um, as you can imagine, this is something that you don't set up yourself. This is being done by a trained person in the laboratory, and therefore um, it is not a very natural environment. Uh, it's not very comfortable. You're just not going to record the sleep that um, the, the way you would um, when you sleep at home. Um, also, the signal analysis is being done manually. So what kind of analysis am I talking about? You see in the second picture on the bottom, you see um, a, a polysomnogram. This shows you um, this, ev the evolution of sleep stages over time of the patient. And this is something that is currently being done manually. So a person is literally sitting down for eight hours, uh, like going through the eight hours of recording, going through every 30 second page of the data and notes down the sleep stage, the arousals, any breathing related events. And as you can imagine, all of this together results in high costs, um, either for the individual or for the healthcare system, and also long waiting times. On the other side, we have so-called activity trackers. Um, and you can see pictures um, on the bottom. Um, those activity trackers can be worn on the wrist or even on the finger. And they're super easy to use. They can be integrated into your daily life. And they often come with a rudimentary data analysis as well. But the disadvantages of these technologies is that they have very low accuracy. They're just not good enough for diagnostics. The analysis is rather coarse, so telling you good, bad, or mediocre sleep is just not enough for medical applications. And one of the reasons for that is that they don't record brain activity in most cases. BitBrain solution brings together the best of these both worlds. What we are developing with the help of EU Hub for Data is um, an easy to use sleep monitoring headband. Um, this bed, uh, headband is super comfortable. Uh, it's no comparison with the medical system that you've seen before. Um, it's based on ergonomic, smart textile technology, uh, and it can be used independently at home. So you take this home, you record your own sleep. Um, what do I mean when I say it records sleep? It actually records brain activity as well as oxygen saturation. 
in your blood. And then it uses artificial intelligence to analyze these data. So there's no manual scoring necessary. And then it provides a well-structured feedback both to the user and their physician with medical grade accuracy. So when you develop a product that depends heavily on AI, like this product, it is imp it's an important building block to acquire a lot of annotated high quality data. And this is exactly where EU Hub for Data gave us a giant uh, support over the last year. As part of the EU Hub for Data experiment, we created a large multimodal sleep data set that consisted of data from our headband, so rain activity and oxygen saturation, but also environmental sensors to get a better feel of how the laboratory looked like. And the medical comparison device, this is on the picture on the top left, this is where all these cables come from. They all come from the standard medical grade um, device that we used for comparison. And to do the, those experiments, I cannot even stretch enough how much effort this was. Sleep studies are generally a large effort, but this one in particular. So we started with our company, uh, we started from scratch. We built sleep labs with two beds and all the technical infrastructure. We had uh, several regulatory hurdles to uh, overcome. There was the ethics approval, of course, to do all these experiments with human subjects. But especially what was especially high effort was to get the approval for testing new medical devices uh, from the local notified body. And um, I got to say, I, I have conducted hundreds of experimental nights in my life at over eight years at the university. But this experiment was particularly difficult and complex because we were working with completely new technology with our textile sensors. What we did was we acquired 30 full nights of recordings. And then we had all of these recordings being scored, so annotated by four professional sleep scorers who assigned sleep stages to each um, part of the data. And then we trained our AI algorithms to do this job automatically. And in addition to that, we developed a collection of additional algorithms to create even more detailed analyses. And together, this was a substantial effort for us, for the company, but eventually also a very important success for us because we now can rely on this well annotated high quality data set. So based on the data collected, what we could do was we could test our sensor technology in a realistic setting. We could use the data to train our um, artificial intelligence alg algorithms. Uh, to analyze the structure of sleep, these sleep stages, sleep events, and also quality, and do that robustly in real time. Um, we could use the results of the analysis to better understand how the environment influences our sleep. And uh, this is a task where we profited a lot from our partner, um, Aragon DH in, in Zaragoza in Spain. Um, we were able to develop um, ideas for the technical infrastructure that is going to be necessary to turn our developments into a product. And here we work with our EU Hubs for Data partner, Cedar in Dublin. Um, we learned to create the maximum value from our data and our algorithms with No Center in, in Graz. And I, we think we produced value not only for us, but by publishing the data at the end of the project, also for other companies in the sleep health sector. So to summarize our success in a, in a few numbers, so with our newly developed textile sensor headband plus our AI technology and the data set that we acquired um, with the help of EU Hubs for Data, um, we have now arrived at an accuracy level of our algorithms at 70 plus minus 5%, which makes these algorithms already ready for, the cons for consumer applications. And this is in a realistic scenario. This is not some best case estimate that you hear sometimes. This is realistic scenario. And we already set out to go further from here. Our next goal is to improve the, uh, the performance of our algorithms to 80%, over 80%, which will open the way for medical um, grade uh, sleep monitoring to get it certified for medical grade sleep monitoring analysis and diagnostics. And once we're at this level of accuracy, we can also move from just monitoring to interventions. 
we can use our technology to realize personalized therapies for sleep associated disorders and this will include non-invasive brain stimulation find out more at our website